we will discuss about a human nematode pathogen whose name is Enterobius vermicularis. Its old uh, scientific name was Oxyurus vermicularis. It is commonly called as pinworm, seat worm, thread worm, etc. And uh, this is a nematode parasite which belongs to the phylum Aschelminthes, which enjoys worldwide distribution. And it usually inhabits the uh, inhabits specific parts of the human digestive system. That is the cecum, the vermiform appendix, and the ascending colon of man. So these three regions are more prone sites where there will be infection of Enteropius vermicularis. Now coming to the morphology of the worm, it is a small sized white colored worm with a fusiform thread like body which is having pointed ends. And since it is an intestinal parasite, it should have a protective covering and that is called as the cuticle which is fine and striated. And the mouth is surrounded by cervical alley which are uh, three wing like cuticular expansions. So, both males and females possess uh, mouth which is surrounded by cute, uh, the uh, wing like expansions called as the cervical alley. Here you can see the cervical alley surrounding the mouth in both male and female. They lack a true buccal cavity. Another characteristic is the presence of a dilated bulb like end of the pharynx which is called as the end bulb. So this is the pharynx whose uh, terminal region is bulb like. So this is called as the end bulb. Now coming to the sexual dimorphism, males and females are separate and the differences are the male is smaller compared to the female. The male is around 2 to 5 millimeter long and 0.2 millimeter thick. Whereas the female is 8 to 13 millimeter long and 0 0.5 millimeter thick. The male is having a curved posterior end. Whereas the female is having a straight sharply pointed tail like posterior end. Another difference is the male bears a cloacal opening at the posterior end through which the gametes as well as the digestive waste are discharged. There is no separate anal opening and gonopore in male. Instead, there is a single passage which is called as the cloaca. Whereas in female, there is a separate genital pore as well as an anal opening. So, female is characterized by the presence of separate digestive opening and genital opening. So, this is the genital opening or the gonopore and this is the anal opening. There is no cloaca in female. In male, in the cloaca, there is a spicule which is called as the copulatory spicule which is helps which helps in sperm transfer during the mating process but such a spicule is absent in female. So, these are some of the characteristics which mark sexual dimorphism between male and female where the males are smaller and the males are having a curved posterior end compared to the female who is having a straight pointed posterior end. In male there is cloacal opening whereas in female there is separate anal and genital opening. The male is characterized by the presence of copulatory spicule which is absent in female. Now coming to the lifespan. Lifespan is short uh, which lasts for around 2 months in which there are 2 stages the adults and the juveniles both are found in the human digestive tract itself and it is a monogenetic parasite whose life cycle is completed only in man there is no intermediate host humans are the only host but it has also been discovered that pinworm infection can be found in certain bonnet macaques bonnet macaques are also found to be hosts of enterobius vermicularis the monkeys now coming to the life cycle again so, the adult males and females are found in the human digestive system. The mating of adults occur in the intestine of the host and the female body gets filled with fertilized eggs. The uterus of the female will be filled with fertilized eggs. Such a female is called as a gravid female. So, mating occurs, sperms are transferred from the body of the male into the female with the help of the copulatory spicule and uh, reproduction takes place inside sorry fertilization takes place inside the uh, 
uh, female reproductive tract and the female uterus is filled with fertilized eggs. So, such a female is called as a gravid female. The male will die soon after mating. So, compared to the female, the male is having a shorter lifespan. Now, what will the female do? The female will descend down the colon and the rectum. So, it will descend down the large intestine all the way and it reaches the area near the anus. So, the female comes and stays beneath the perianal skin of the host that means the skin around the anus of the host and this migration usually occurs during night. So, the female will travel from the large intestine and comes to the anal area where it will stay in the peri near the perianal skin of the host and there she will lay numerous transparent eggs. So, numerous transparent eggs will be laid by the female and this will lead to intestinal irritation and itching in that area of the host body. So, what will the host do? The host or the human being will respond by scratching or rubbing the perianal area because of the presence of eggs and the females. So, because of the presence of the females laying eggs, the human host will experience itching in that area and he scratches the perianal area which will lead to crushing of the female and pressing of the uterus which will lead to the release of eggs in the perianal area and the contraction of the female can also lead to the expulsion of the eggs and however the eggs will be released in the perianal region of the host. Now and now starts the infection. So, the eggs have come out and the infection can occur. There are two methods of infection. One is called as auto infection and the other is called as retro infection. So, what is auto infection? It is the mode of infection from the anus to the mouth. That is the pinworm it lays eggs on the perianal skin of the host which will lead to itching and scratching of the perianal area with the fingers lead to, de lead to the deposition of eggs under the nails of the infected person. And uh, this person if he brings such contaminated fingers to his mouth the eggs will reach his digestive tract and they will travel down the uh, digestive system of the host. So, this is called as auto infection that is direct hand to mouth contact by the infected person. Again there can be another mode of infection where other persons get infected through the food, the handling of clothes etc which are contaminated by the eggs. So, these eggs they may contaminate the bed sheets, bed spreads, the clothings used by the host etc and from there they will reach another person's body if he uh, touches or he comes in contact with these contaminated clothes, bed sheets etc and this will lead to infection to other people and this is what is called as auto infection that means infection from this person to his body itself through the uh, anus to mouth that means by ha uh, hand contact. So, that is called as auto infection. There can be another mode of infection which is called as retro infection. This is the mode of infection from the anus to the colon. The eggs they may hatch out in the perianal skin itself and there will be development of immature worms which will hatch out from the eggs. These immature worms they will they are the infective stages they will migrate back into the large intestine that means they will migrate through the anus and develop to worms in the colon. They will migrate back to the large intestine. So, that is what is called as retro infection. That means the eggs hatch out in the perianal region, they will develop into worms. The worms will travel back through the colon, uh, travel back through the uh, intestine and raise the colon again. That is called retro infection. Whereas in auto infection, the eggs laid in the perianal region may reach the infected person's fingers, fingernails, bed spreads, clothes etc. And from there if it reaches the person's mouth again or person's uh, food again or water again, 
it will reach his digestive tract. So that is called as auto infection. It is the mode of infection from the anus to the mouth and this is more commonly seen in children who may not have uh, hygienic practices. Anyway, by auto infection the eggs reach uh, the persons or another person's digestive system where they reach the duodenum. From the duodenum the young ones will move downward and they get matured in the intestine and in the intestine they become the adults where again mating occurs either in the terminal part of the small intestine or the initial part of the large intestine and the process will continue. So this is called as uh, th this is how the life cycle is completed and we will just have a comparison of auto infection and retro infection. In auto infection uh, the it happens from a pathogen which is already present in the body. In retro infection the third stage larvae they migrate back into the host. Uh, auto infection occurs from the anus to the mouth, retro infection occurs from anus to colon. Auto infection is more common in children whereas retro infection is more common in adults. Sometimes this gravid female it will go for extra intestinal migration that is usually seen in female horse. So in a female human being the anal opening is in close proximity with the ur urinary opening as well as the genital opening. So the urinary opening, genital opening and anal openings of human females are in proximity. The gravid females of this worm which come to the anus or which come to the perianal region they will migrate from there towards the urinary opening or the vaginal opening and they get access to organs the reproductive organs such as the vagina the fallopian tube etc or the excretory organs such as the urinary bladder urethra etc. So that is called as extra intestinal traveling of this parasite that means from, from uh, it usually occurs in human females not in human males because in human males the urinogenital opening is located at the tip of the penis it is far from the anal opening whereas in human females the anal opening is very close to the urinary opening and the genital opening. So the female worms which come to the anal region may migrate to the urinary opening or the genital opening and reach organs such as the vagina, fallopian tube, urinary bladder, urethra etc. So these are the various modes of infection. Now we come to the pathogenicity. The infection caused by endrobi endrobius is called as endrobiasis or oxyuriasis whose symptoms are perianal irritation, itching etc. Some, sometimes it also leads to uh, gastrointestinal discomfort, restlessness, insomnia which is also called as a lack of sleep anorexia which means decreased appetite for food there will be eczematous conditions caused by itching around the anus salpingitis or inflammation of the fallopian tube if the females come to the fallopian tube so these are some of the symptoms there will be inflammation of the vulva and the vagina in human female host there are increased urinary tract infections and children also show nocturnal enuresis that is bed wetting and also daytime tiredness. It can lead to abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, teeth grinding, irritability etc. And in the intestine because of the presence of this parasite there can be lesions in the intestine, inflammatory lesions which will lead to bacterial infections, hemorrhages, ulceration etc. all caused by the presence of the worms. Now coming to the preventive measures, the prophylaxis and the treatment. So first is treatment of family members with anti helminthic drugs and second is maintenance of hygiene that is frequent hand washing with soap and water after using toilet before eating etc. Trimming nails regularly and avoiding nail biting, avoid scra scratching of the anal area showering every morning and washing the anal area to remove eggs if any, avoiding co-path with infected people, 
cleansing the bathrooms and toilets. So these are the preventive measures and if there is infection the patient is treated using antihelminthic drug that is mebendazole. So this finishes the pathogenicity of Androbius vermicularis or pinworm.